All right, so now that you know what an integral is and we've done some basic ones, um, I want to look at, we talked in class about how you can't just use the chain rule like you used to be able to use the chain rule when we did derivatives. So we're going to find an inverse way of using the chain rule. Um, so one of the things that, that you need to be aware of is that we're going to look for the inner function um, of a composed function so that we can find the derivative. Um, and we're going to be using some constants and, and talking about that along the way. Um, for substitution, this gets a little busy. I'll explain it. It says if f is an antiderivative of little f, so again, this is the result, this is the integrand, which you're trying to take the integral of. So if I want to do the integral of, this is a composition, right, because you have a function within a function, times the derivative of already what's inside, right? That's what gives you back out f of g of x. And if this should make sense, because if you think about it, guys, if you went that way, wouldn't you do... Um, well, actually, if you went this way, you would do the derivative of f of, of g of x times the derivative of what's inside. So it's kind of the same idea, but again, this, this part right here is already technically the derivative because um, this is the part we're going to do the integral of. So this is if our, the derivative has already happened. So we're going to be going the backwards way. Um, the way that we're going to do that is by using u substitution. We're going to let the in, inner function be a u. We're going to find the derivative of that, and we're going to be able to plug that back in. It really does help if you see it in practice, so let's get right to it. Okay, so in our first example, we want to take the integral of a function within a function. So my inner function here is the 5x plus 7, and my outer function is square rooting. So my inner function is what I'm going to be let equal to you. Okay. Um, over here, you're starting to replace what's happening. So everything that's under here is a u. And then I still have a dx here. So if I want to be able to do this integral correctly, this needs to be a du so that I can integrate with respect to u. So that's something I need to fix in a moment. But I'll come back to that. So on the right-hand equation, we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So over here, we have 5, this is 0, and then this, the derivative of u, would be technically 1. But remember, because it's u and I'm taking it with respect to x, it's du dx, right? Because you're doing the derivative of a variable other than x. Now, I will tell you that most books, instead of doing du dx on this side, they immediately multiply this side by dx so that they're separated. That's up to you. I do that as a shortcut, but I want you to see where that dx that I have now on the left side came from. It did come from doing the derivative with respect to x. So take a look at this. Um, this is almost at a point where I can replace this dx with something in terms of u. In fact, if I multiply, I don't like to say division, so I'm going to do multiplying by one-fifth on both sides. Now I have something that I can replace this dx, which is a problem, with. So I'm going to replace this in here. I'm also going to rewrite the u, that's the square root, to the one half. And you guys are going to see why. I want to do that in a second. So technically I have this. Now I will tell you, it is easier to integrate if you take anything that's a constant out front. So I'm going to bring that one fifth out front. So at this point, you guys, this integral is totally doable. This is what we did yesterday. You've got a power function. It does have a u instead, but as long as this matches what you're doing the derivative with respect to, you're good to go. So let's do the integral. So I will take it up by a power, which would give me 3 halves. And then technically I divide by 3 halves, but that's the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds. And then, of course, plus c. Okay, now let's plug back in, um, well, before we do that, let's do this. Let's simplify this, and that gives me 2 fifteenths u to the 3 halves plus c. The last step, and this is important, is to replace u. That's huge. So go back up. u was actually this. So in your final answer would be 2 fifteenths 5x plus 7 to the 3 halves plus c. Let's see a few more. All right, in the second example, we're going to do some trick. So we're doing the integral of cos of 4x dx. So once again, we have a function within a function. You think of it probably still a little as the chain rule. So we're going to set the inner part equal to u. 
We're going to take the derivative of both sides. I get 4. Again, technically I get du dx, and that becomes a 4 dx du equals du. Over here, I've just got the cos of now u dx. Before we can actually take the integral here, remember, we can't do the integral of u unless we're doing it with respect to u. So I need to replace this dx. So let's solve for dx, which gives me 1 fourth du. This is going to get plugged in here. Keep your work nice and organized. Now again, this 1 fourth can come out front. And I'm ready to integrate. So the integral of cos, yes, is sine. So I've got 1 fourth of sine of u plus c. And again, that final step is to replace the u with what you had originally, which is a 4x. Again, you can always check your work by taking the derivative of this, and you should get back to cos of 4x. All right, I've got one more example for you before you begin the problem sets on this. This one's quite complicated, and at first it looks like you'd have to replace two things, um, but you don't. And sometimes this takes a little trial and error, so you'll just have to work with some of these. So what I notice is I've got all sorts of functions going on. I've got a function on top. On the bottom, I've got a function that's to a power. I would tell you that your, the tip-off here for me is the fact that the bottom has a function to the 6. So that's where I'm going to start. Also, you're going to see something nice in a moment. So I'm going to let u be equal to that whole inner part on the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and do the derivative now. So technically, this is du dx. This is 3x squared minus 3. And I want you to take a quick moment and look at this, guys. This right here, if you factor a 3 out, I'm going to go ahead and bring the dx over, becomes, check that out, that becomes something that's in our problem, which can actually help us replace. You might see it a little bit better if I put the u back in, so I'm going to do that. So right now, according to what I let be u, this is what I have, right? But the problem is, not only do you have this, now you've got these this x um, term on top that still needs to be replaced. And that's why it was so nice, because here it is. So in this one, instead of solving for dx, I'm going to solve for all of that, and then I'm going to be able to get rid of those x's as well without having to do a substitution for those. So I've got x minus 1 dx equals a third du. So that's huge. That means I can replace this whole top part. If you're having trouble seeing how that's going to substitute, I can, and I'm totally able to separate this into this. I want you guys to take a look at that. I just pulled the denominator out front and made it a product, which is fine. Maybe now you'll see how I can substitute this in. So these two are the same, so I'm going to replace that with the one-third du. Bring that one-third out. I'm going to go ahead and bring then the u to the sixth up and make it u to the negative sixth, and then once again, we're ready to do the integral, and it's an easy power rule. So I've got one-third, take my power up by one, which would actually make it negative five, divide by negative five, or in this case, I don't like to divide, I'd rather multiply, plus c. So I've got negative one-fifteenths, u to the negative fifth, but I'm gonna replace my u with this, and then as a last step, because of the negative exponent, I'm going to go ahead and write it like this. And then, of course, I'll sneak a plus C in there. So the big ideas here, guys, are to find the function within a function. So like, look for that chain rule. Replace that with a U. You're going to eventually take a derivative. I think it does help to kind of replace it and at least see what's happening. So maybe after you choose you, rewrite it, then do your derivative and see where that derivative takes you. If there's still x's in your problem after you choose the u, you're going to have to find a way for this to somehow replace that as well. So that's how I saw that kind of coming together.
and then you do you set, do your substitution, you plug that in, um, again, making sure that you get that du in there, bring any constants out front, do your uh, antiderivative, and then again, replacing that u at the end, and your plus c. Okay, um, be careful with some of these. Some are a little more uh, difficult than others. Some, if you simplify from the beginning, are actually easier than others. So always watch out for that. All right, good luck with the homework, and I'll see you in class.